guys. Dave here from Wolf in the Wild Survival. And as you can see, I'm not in the bush. I'm not wearing camouflage. I am in my patrol car. And I'm in uniform. I think this is a pretty good setting for this video. So a little while back, I took a new position within my company, and I am, and have been for a while, uh, what they call a mobile vagrancy patrol officer. Now that comes with pretty good rays a lot more hours, so I jumped on it right away, and so far I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I'm sure some of you are asking the question, what does that mean? What do I do? So where I live in London, Ontario, we have a lot of homeless people. And some of those homeless people will trespass in places that they're really not supposed to be. Now, that's totally understandable because it gets cold in London, Ontario through the winter. But nevertheless, people have been showing up for work and their entranceway or vestibule has garbage all over the place. Somebody has defecated all over the floor, urinated on the walls, um, hypodermic needles laying around from some of the drug users. vomit, empty alcohol bottles, that sort of thing. So it's my job to go to where they are and basically see them on their way. Now, unfortunately, the majority of the people that I move along are actually very decent people. They're not injection drug users or the kind of person, you know, that would defecate all over the floor. <clears throat> so on and so forth. However, it's that minority of people that basically has ruined it for the rest of them. Hence, my job. Now, <clears throat> honestly, I have been verbally attacked by John Q. Public for doing my job. And... In a way, I, I see their point. I do. But, I mean, these people don't have to show up for work and clean another person's crap up off the floor and mop up the vomit and all manner of horribly disgusting kind of things. Nor are they picking up a garbage bag and getting stabbed with a hypodermic needle that had been used by a junkie. So, if you're considering attacking me in the comments section about my job, think about that first, and think about this. When I move a person 
along their way. I generally try to help out a lot of the time. Um, I have a bag full of blankets in the back. I have socks, gloves, and mittens. <clears throat> I hand out like hot chocolate, coffee, cookies, donuts from the Tim Hortons. I, I do try to help out. Now, obviously I can't do that for everybody. Not everyone is happy to see me, and some of them are quite nasty to me. Um, usually verbally, sometimes physically. And to the ones that get really, really nasty with me, I move them along their way, and I don't really do anything for them. Because you can't help everybody. Reports. 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 That's what I'm doing here. I've got to do my reports. So. That is... basically the long and short of it. So. Oh, do, 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 and one more. I am here and there is no one. That's yeah. Alright. So that's my job. That's what I do. I have been, I have been threatened, I have been attacked, I have been hugged and given handshakes and everything in between. So not one of those kinds of people that think that I'm super important and I'm just going to treat people like garbage. No, that's not me. Not me at all. long and short of it. It's this job that has inspired me to make this video. Where to even begin? When you work in the kind of thing that I do, you meet all different types of people. And everybody has a story to tell. And a lot of the people that I meet really just want someone to listen to their stories. That's that's gold to them a lot of the time. If you're willing to listen they will tell you all kinds of stuff. And some of it's a little off the wall because there are the homeless people that have mental health issues. It doesn't necessarily make their fears any less relevant. And it certainly doesn't make them any less of a person. But those people will tell you some really, really messed up stuff. Other people will tell you the kinds of stories that don't shock you at all. And it's, it's those stories, as, as I'm hearing them, that it, it put things into focus where... More or less, I've been trying to say this in a lot of my videos and never really knew how to 
properly put it into words to convey the, the proper message. That message basically is people who are putting together bug out bags, get home bags, get lost bags, inch bags, whatever. All these, these different things. They're not as messed up, they're not as crazy, they're They're not as eccentric as many of you might think. Because a lot of the stories that I hear are sort of what I would describe, I guess, as the worst examples of common everyday occurrences. Just normal everyday things. And that being something happens. Something triggers a series of events that has caused many of these people to become homeless. We're not talking about civil unrest, natural disaster. We're not talking about World War Three. We're not talking about aliens landing, and we're sure not talking about zombie apocalypse. We're talking about this one guy. His his job moved out of the country. Factory closed down. Job moved out of the country. Well, in the time that he was working at this place he and I don't know how exactly, I don't know what happened but he somehow acquired a criminal record he already had the job he didn't have to go and tell his bosses, hey I have a criminal record now, and I guess they didn't look you know, at it at all so not a big deal, but when it came time to look for another job well, he's got a criminal record. It makes it difficult to find decent work. Ergo, he ended up being homeless. He's, uh, he's in a real rough spot. Next person. They were apparently innocently accused of a rather heinous crime. Now, he swears up and down that he didn't do it. This was, he was in a feud with somebody, and that somebody made an accusation, and he went to court, and he was found not guilty. The nature of the crime he was accused of was pretty bad, and this person he was feuding with made darn sure that everybody knew what he was being charged with. So that homeless person basically became ostracized in his circle of friends and uh, his community and he fell into a pretty deep depression lost his job and uh, ended up homeless. Now I could sit here and tell stories that would make this video just so long most people probably wouldn't even watch the whole thing. But I do want to tell this one last kind of long story. I'll try to make it as short as possible. But it's important. I think it's important. I think people need to know about this. And it really helped to shape 
me into the kind of security guard that I am today. So, it's, it's it, to me it's important for people to know about this. Back when I first started my security career, there was a gentleman uh, who went by the name Billy Bear. Uh, he was uh, he was an older guy, native chap, um, really nice guy, and absolutely hilarious. He was one of those rare types that basically could make anybody laugh. He, sometimes he, he got a little bit ornery uh, when he was, you know, drinking a little too much, but for the most part, he was just a really, really, really nice guy. Uh, but he was an alcoholic, and that's pretty much, as far as I know, why he was homeless. And uh, most of the guards that worked downtown knew knew this guy, and nobody really ever had a bad thing to say about him. But still, you know, he was. He was a homeless guy, so, you know, he was a little unwashed, he was a little unkept, a little stinky, and, uh, sometimes he wasn't always the nicest person to deal with, you know, because of the smell. But, uh, what he, what he lacked in cleanliness he kind of made up for it personality I suppose and then one day along one of our main streets here somebody saw him lying on the side of the road figured they'd give him some money and when they approached him uh, uh, kind of realized this man's not alive anymore. So, that was, that was the end of uh, old Billy Bear. Maybe a week later, a buddy of mine comes up to me. And he says, hey, did you did you hear about Billy Bear? Said, yeah, yeah, I did. You know, it's, it's really sad. It's, it's uh, really sucks, you know, that he, that he went that way. And, uh, you know, my, my friend said, no, did you hear the rest of it? Um, no, I, I didn't know there was a rest of it. I mean, how much further can a story go after, you know, the guy died? So my friend hands me this newspaper, and uh, the, the local paper did a write-up about him, which is really weird. You know, the, the local newspaper just doing a write-up about, you know, a homeless guy who died out on the streets, because um, I'm, I'm sad to say, I mean, that kind of thing happens quite a lot, and nobody else ever really got a newspaper article about them, so, you know, th this is, I gotta see this, and the more I read, the more I just, I was in, in utter disbelief, I was shocked, as it turns out, Old Billy Bear wasn't a Canadian. He was an American. 
and he was a highly decorated military officer. I can't remember what rank. I honestly, I, I really I don't have a clue. I can't remember what rank. But I do know this. He had a small collection of Purple Hearts and Silver Stars and two Congressional Medals of Honor. Now, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, they don't just give those things away. You don't open a box of Cracker Jacks and, you know, oh, look, I got a Congressional Medal of Honor. No, that's two of them. He was in Vietnam, he was in Korea, and I believe he was stationed somewhere overseas, like close to Germany, during the Cold War. And it was the realities of war, the, everything that he's seen and, and done, that had kind of turned him to alcohol and make him an alcoholic. And uh, that that poor guy died of hypothermia and exposure on the side of a very busy road in a foreign country. <clears throat> this is after he served his country for the majority of his life. Career military. Did everything right. Still ended up on the streets. If it could happen to him, it could happen to any of us. So there you have it. Um, three perfectly viable stories of people who more or less did everything right, at least to some degree. Their savings dwindled away. Their friends and family could only offer so much help. And inevitably, they all ended up on the streets. Now, one of the most common things that I hear, other than, you know, do you have any spare change? is I don't plan on doing this forever. Which is good. Very good. They, they haven't lost hope. But the fact of the matter remains is that they are where they are right now. And As I said before, I'm, I'm passing out, you know, blankets and gloves and, you know, kind of what, you know, I try to help out, you know, give them a little bit of food or something warm, just sort of whatever. And, oh, probably 99, nine, ugh, probably 90 to 95% of the people that I ask, do they know what Mylar is? Have, have they ever heard of a Mylar blanket? 90 to 95% of them don't have a clue what I'm talking about. I haven't even said bug out bag. If you don't know what Mylar is, you're not going to know what a bug out bag is. And a lot of these people are younger than me, 
some of them are around my age. Yeah, the odd one is a fair bit older. And, I mean, to the older ones, in a way, I guess I can kind of see that maybe they didn't they didn't know about having some sort of a, a just-in-case bag put off to the side in the event that something happens. That, I, in a way, I can understand. But anybody my age or younger, I don't really see why they wouldn't have at least some rudimentary knowledge about camping and therefore about maybe having some sort of a preparedness bag, I guess you might call it, if not a bug out bag or an inch bag or, you know, whatever, just a broad general term. And I don't know if anybody has used this or not, but let's let's start that. A broad general term for all of those bags. Get lost, get home, bug out, inch, whatever. How about a preparedness bag? That's that's what I'm gonna call it from now on. It could be as simple as just something to make a super shelter. And I have told some of these guys how to do it. Oddly enough, I've not seen them again, so they've either checked into a shelter, found an alternative warm place to be, or they took my advice and they went and built a campsite, a couple of super shelters, and, you know, bada bing, Bob's your uncle, there you go. Either way, uh, what do you call those things where... Artists have like these tubes. They're they're about three feet long, four to six inches across. So just these round tubes, and they they roll up, you know, their artwork and their sketches and their whatever, and they put them in these tubes to carry them around. And I've seen those you know, like Walmart and certain places where you like you know, ten twenty bucks. 10 or 20 bucks with one of these tubes. And you could very easily get some mylar, some tarp, and some vapor barrier. Roll it all up with some matches, lighter, a couple of a couple of different ways to, to get a fire going, whatever. Whatever it is you know how to how to do, you roll all that up with uh, I don't know socks, mittens, and underwear. You know, jam it in that tube, and you throw it in the back of your closet. In the event that something bad happens, you at least have that. You're not going to be freezing to death as long as you have that little and I I keep I tell people this that I meet you know all the time 10 15 bucks at a dollar store will get you everything that you need to put together a super shelter I think uh, the vast majority of us can afford 10 or 15 bucks for even the most basic rudimentary setup. And something else that I hear a fair bit, actually. Well, I don't really need to bother with any of that kind of stuff. I have savings. I've got know, a bunch of money in the bank. Well, there's two things wrong with that statement right there. Number one, how long will that last you for? A month? 
two, six, 12. In the event of something really bad, some, some near catastrophic life event, wife gets mad at you, boots you out the door. Maybe you'll get back together. Maybe you won't. Do you want to sleep on a park bench until you figure that out? Or do you want to have a super shelter in some green space somewhere where you can build a campfire and not freeze all night long until your wife ain't mad at you anymore? How about that whole mental health issue, depression, maybe some sort of you know, anxiety problem. You, you, you start suffering anxiety attacks. It's, I mean, I can go on and on. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. It might not necessarily be enough to see you through a crisis. So a backup plan is always a good idea. Problem number two with that statement. If you can afford to shove all kinds of money into a bank account towards the savings just in case you need it, how can you not afford to spend 15 or 20 or 50 or $100 on a preparedness bag? Something, anything. So it's it's a little bit of money that, you know, maybe you're not going to collect interest on in the bank. Well, do banks really pay that much interest anymore? You know? What do you get every month for $1,000? Like a penny? Come on, guys. Just put something together. Just something. Just a, a, a cheap, easy peace of mind just in case. You should never know. You, you never really know. So why take the chance? I've met so many different people, so many different homeless people with so many different stories. Just unique. Everyone. But they all more or less have a common theme. They weren't prepared for what life had to throw at them. And they didn't know about any of this preparedness stuff. They had no idea at all, none, that it might be a good idea uh, to do something like that. So now they're they're suffering for it. Now they pay the price. And as unfortunate as it is, as As, as sad as it is and ha how, how bad that it is, 50 bucks worth of gear in a backpack would have made their lives infinitely better. So if you don't have any kind of preparedness bag, you're watching this video and you're not even thinking about putting one together, why? Why not? You don't even have to spend it all at once. Just every once in a while when you go out, you're at a thrift store or a secondhand store or, you know, whatever, and you, you think to yourself, that little cooking pot would actually go good in my preparedness bag. You know, that, that little rain suit, that something or other, you know, oh, look, an army surplus store, 
let's go in and have a look around. Make it a little hobby. Chances are you're not going to be homeless tomorrow. You don't have to run right out to Walmart or Lowe's or whatever place and spend a whole bunch of money right now. Just start to get something together and plan ahead. Make a little hobby out of it. Watch a few videos. You know, it's there's all kinds of different videos about it. You don't have to just watch my channel. You can watch all kinds of stuff that'll help you along the way. But honestly, I really, really, really would never want to meet somebody on the streets, freezing cold, hungry, suffering, and have them say to me, I used to watch your channel. I really wish I would have listened to you. That that would be terrible. To, to me, that would be a failure on my part because I didn't get the message across seriously enough. I'd like to say, hey, I hope you enjoyed the video, all that good stuff. But, you know, it was a bit of a downer, kind of some sad stories and whatnot, you know, not really super enjoyable, I imagine, but I hope it was educational. I hope that somebody sees this video and says, you know, that weirdo is right. I really, really should take 25 bucks, get a few things, jam it in the closet, just in case. Just in case I lose my job, my wife throws me out, my my dog dies and I get so depressed that I lose my apartment. Kind of the, the stories just pile up and pile up and pile up. There's so many different variables. And it doesn't matter that most of these people aren't going to be homeless forever. What matters is, is it's late November, it's cold out, there's snow on the ground, and they're cold and freezing. They're, they're, they're hungry and they're wet. And I know that if it happened to me, I am ready to go. As a matter of fact, between the, the several different things that I've put together, one for my vehicle, one to wear on my hip when I'm just going for a hike, and my camp bag slash bug out bag, and the various things that I've I've got on the side in different tents and and you know, oh I went and got a silky gomboy. I don't really need this wood saw anymore, so I'm gonna put that off to the side and then I got the dollar store saw you know, that I did a, a little review on or whatever, I could put together a homeless person village and we could share tasks and share food and make life better for all of us. I could totally do that. I know I'll be okay on my own. What about you? If you found yourself homeless at the beginning of December in a temperate climate, like Canada, how will you fare in below freezing weather? If the answer to that wasn't great, I'll do fine. Then you need to heed my words. Do what you got to do to put some preparedness bag together so that you know if things get rough, things get bad, maybe you'll be kind of cold, maybe you'll be a little hungry, and maybe you'll be kind of stinky because you haven't been able to bath or shower in four or five days or however long, but you'll still do okay still be relatively comfortable, relatively fed, and you'll you'll live. You're not going to freeze to death on the side of the road and remain there until somebody 
has a kind enough soul to say, I'm going to give that poor indigent some money. Thanks for watching, guys. I truly, truly, truly hope that this helps somebody out. And that someday, if the worst happens, you'll be somewhere safe with your bag putting together your little campsite, thinking about how glad you are that you watched this video. More than that, I truly hope that nobody ever has to suffer being homeless, but let's face it, it could happen to anyone and it does happen to a lot of us. I will see you guys in the next video and hopefully I find you well have a good one guys